We have been traveling the rich lands of East Africa, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful region, talking to farmers wherever we go. We have given them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey across East Africa and share the family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shepap Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shepap. We are here in Narumoru. On our Facebook page, we held a competition where we asked you to give us reasons why we should come and shape up your Shamba. Now, let's go and meet the lucky winner. <laughs> Mr. Kinuthia has a large family, all live in the city, while he tends to his farm with Rose, his wife. He really wants his children to take up farming and get involved. One of them did just that. My name is Eric Kenudia. Actually, my story was about uh, my parents. We came from Hema Homa Bay and came uh, to Nairomoro to come and start a new life. And they've been doing farming here. I also do other online work. Uh, I also go to the internet looking for market for produce. I found out about the competition through Facebook. And I've also been watching Shamba Shepa every Saturday and Sunday for about a year now. I've been looking for a way to come and look for you guys to come here and do a little Shamba Shepa for us here. Let's see what his parents think of this. Wilfred and Rose, Eric is the lucky winner of our Shamba Shepa competition. How does that make you feel? I was so happy because I knew Eric had realized what is in the land. The same land is the one that educated them. And I'm sure now he can see what he has done and we are happy and we appreciate what he has done. So Rose, how did you feel? I felt very great. Eric, what are you doing to help your parents in the farming? I'm the digital guy. You're using the internet to help your parents yeah. in their farming activities. Yeah, yeah right. And that's how he got to us. Yeah, that's wow. great. Now, what, what do you think young people like Eric here what do you think about them and their attitude towards farming? Do you think they are changing? My wish was if only they can realize what the land has for them, most of them would not even keep saying there is no job. They would go to the land and get the same amount. Mm -hmm. hmm? Good money, even what, more than what they can expect to be employed. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what we can do to pull them back and move from the town and come to to the villages. So Eric, what yes. do you think they could do? We the youth should take advantage of the ways of hand. Uh, use it to find some land. You don't have to buy it. You can hire some land, uh, do a little farming, and then with time you can grow. Eric was talking about lease. Would you, would you give your land to him to start doing it, or do you lease it to him? I will not even lease to him. I will just give him for a while so that he can taste the soil. The moment you are tested, you know what to do. How long have you yourself been farming? Actually, you may think I'm a farmer. I'm not a farmer. And 2008, when things changed due to elections, we came here and I found myself with nothing. There were three of them in the university and I have managed to educate them all through this land. Wow. Now, what are you planting? Currently, I'm planting maize, we have beans, we have uh, gorgets, and we had planted some carrots some other times, and we managed to get about 100 bags. And we realized we are doing good, we are not doing bad. We have potatoes still planted in the land. Speaking of potatoes, how are your potatoes doing? At times, we get good results, but right now, they had gone down. But you have realized that there are some diseases that keep bothering us. So your potatoes have diseases? Yeah. Okay. What else do you have in your farm? I have dairy cow, I have uh, fish, I also have goats. I only miss uh, cuckoo. But you must have had them, we've, we've seen your, your shed. But I stopped having them because of the cost of uh, feeds. And uh, we had diseases. 
What are the main, main problems that you are facing right now? Water, because we do irrigation. So I came up with an idea of having a, a small dam. Now the problem I have is now how I can use the, the water because I need piping of the water so that I can be able to, to irrigate the farm properly. And I hope truly after we leave here, your shamba will be shipped up and Eric will be proud. Well, Naomi, it looks like we are going to be very, very busy. That's right. What do you want to start with? Kitchen. Kitchen? Uh, ch kitchen. Ch um, chicken. Chickens. Chickens, yes. <laughs> yes, you're going to start with chickens. Uh, I've gone around the farm and I've seen there are pipes lying all over the place. I've seen Wilfred has got water from the project and there's got a dam. So, I mean, to be sure, water is not the main problem here. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is... Planning. 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 And I'm going to get him an expert to help him to be able to manage and plan his farm better. Right. Good. Let's go and do it. Go to the kitchens. <laughs> there are a lot of things Mze wants help with. First, let's see how we can put this good chicken shed back into business. Patrick from Kenchik is here to help. <laughs> so Patrick, you've had a look around. So what do you think? Well, Naomi, we are going to improve a few things. Mm -hmm. Number one, we are going to improve on ventilation because the behind part of the house is completely closed. We are also going to work on the laying boxes. They are good, yes, but they are not enough. Mm -hmm. We are also going to improve on the lighting. Uh, we will have so much parts of the house open, which is not good for the layer. But, and also, there is so much bush at the back of the house. It becomes a breeding ground for the rodents, like right. the rats mm -hmm. and the snakes, and the rats will transmit disease to mm -hmm. the birds. It looks like it's a long time when there were chickens in this house. Why are we not having chickens now? It's a wrong story. Cost of food made us uh, dispose them, actually, and the disease. So you had problem with disease, a problem disease with the feed, and, and the production? Feeds. Yes. Can you remember how old the birds were when you bought them? I bought them when they were one month old. Yeah, they died when they were how old? I lost mm. 200 the same week, immediately after I won. Can you remember where you bought the, the chicks? Actually, I was buying them from Karatina. So when you get, got the chicks, did they give you the vaccination history or how much feed the birds had fed on? Or According to him, history? he had vaccinated every bird and he had done everything that was required to be done. Mm -hmm. So it is always advisable when you buy chicks, you buy them at day old from a reputable supplier so that you're able to raise the birds yourself. You were able to get to know what they fed on and also the vaccination history and whether all standards have been adhered to. So are you ready? Yes. Yeah, we are very much ready. <laughs> So, with the recommendations of our Kenchik expert, work begins. Looking at the size of the chicken shed, the 500 birds Rose had before were too many. Chickens need one square foot each. The laying boxes should be one foot cubed and so needed reducing in size. Everyone gets involved in the improving of the chicken shed. They don't grow on that tree. Modern farming is a business. And like any other business, you have to plan. If you don't plan, then you plan to fail. How do you make your farm more efficient? Planning is very essential. And how do we do that? Come with me. An expert from the MCAP and IFAD project, Boniface, has come to look at the farm and see how we can plan it to catch as much water as possible and use the water efficiently. Ready first. For every farm to succeed, we must have a good farm plan. So this helps us plan about water, the irrigation, yes. where the dam will be built. The, good, the farm plan yeah. indicates how you would like to do farming in your farm. Yeah. Yes. So you decide now in my farm, this is what I want to do. 
I want to have this number of acres under food crops, under this cash crop. If you have livestock, yeah. you also have to set aside yeah. a piece of land where you've been growing your fodder crops for the animals. Remember mm. that uh, each animal requires an acre. One acre of Napier mixed with the other fodder crop. And by looking at this dam, do you think it's big enough? When you look at this dam, the number of crops that are being grown in this farm, mm -hmm. you require more of this water. Okay. So you need now to, to improve the efficiency of this water when you are using the, the dam. Ah, yes. Good, good. So I'm very sure the farmer has been using what we are calling sprinkler irrigation. But for you to improve the efficiency, you need now to go to drip. Okay. Yes. So from your notebook, where do you start from? You make a sketch. This is the whole farm. So now the farmer has to decide how many blocks of this farm do I need to put up so that I know where is the water harvesting structure to be? Where do I need to put my permanent crops? We call them perennial crops. Where do I uh, uh, grow food crops? And you can see the farmer has to decide because these ones will be rotated every season. And also, where do we put up the fodder crops for the animals? Good. The plot has to be blocked in a way that uh, whatever section you have designed for irrigation, it is you have to know of the amount of water that is uh, you require in that that uh, that specific uh, plot. Mm -hmm. So you need now to look at uh, how do I increase the catchment for the water to improve the amount that I require mm -hmm. to be able to support the farming activities that I have in the farm. So you also need to put up what we call water conservation measures. But he has, he has a good start, hasn't he? Has he has a good start, and start. that's what we are trying to improve on. That sounds quite interesting. And I think that what we need to do now is to do a sketch yes. of the farm yes. and see where we can place everything. Yes. Boniface helped Muse to draw a good plan for water on his farm. Then Eric used his digital skills to put the plan onto his computer. It's very exciting to see Eric getting into farming. And the chicken shed is almost getting ready. Plus, Mze and Rose are ready to get back to chicken farming. Not forgetting that Boniface gave Mze a good farm plan. But there's still more to come, right after the break. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are still here in Naru Moru in Eric's farm, the lucky winner. We've already had a look at a good farm plan and also taken a look at the chickens, but there's still more to come. So let's get back to it. Back up. When we drew a farm plan with Boniface, we discovered the farm needed a tank to help irrigate the higher areas. The tank needs to be built on a stand so gravity can be used to irrigate. Now the farm has been planned and the chicken shed is being improved, it's time for me to go and check the crops and see what needs to be shaped up. In the lab. James, an expert from Syngenta, is taking a look at the crops to see what needs improving. Let's hear what he has come up with. So James, yes. by looking at this potato patch, what yeah. do you think are the main problems with the potatoes here? The biggest problem with this block of potatoes one is spacing, the other one I can see it is bacterial wilt disease and uh, another symptoms of blight. The spacing which you can recommend, I can tell him to put 20 centimeters from tuber to tuber. So I would like to know where you source the seed. I got them from my farm. I selected a few good ones, yeah. I replanted again. Okay. So he replanted the seeds that he had used the last season. Yeah. Is that good? No, it is not good. What do you recommend? I can recommend him to source for a certified seeds. Certified seeds give you a better harvest because they do not have diseases. So what are the specific problems? You see there is a problem what we call the bacterial wilt. Right. Which come with the seeds. From where he sourced the seed? Right. Yeah. If you see any symptoms like this one of bacterial wilt, remove this with his soil. Then you dispose it in a good place and don't feed this plant to the animals. There is no plant that can cure this? No plant can cure this. Mm. The best thing is to have satisfied seeds. So yeah. is that the only problem? 
we have another problem of blight. The flowering is aborting due to blight, you see. And what can I do now? We can spray a chemical from Sigenta, which we call Lido Mill Gold. First, remember always to wear protective clothing and follow the instructions on the packet. Mix 50 grams of Lido Mill Gold in 20 liters of water. Spray on the leaves and the flowers. This is enough for a quarter of an acre. You cover all the, your crop very well, because if you don't cover very well, some patches of uh, potato will be left without being sprayed. Yeah. You spray after two weeks, yeah. then I spray again after two weeks yeah. for three consecutive sprays. Should we spray that one if they are not affected? If they are not affected, affected mm. we can tell you to use duck on you. So James, yes. uh, Wilfred used Riddle Mill and he's, as he's saying, it didn't seem to work. What do you think could have been the main, main problem? I think the main problem which occurs during his spraying, it is poor timing. So he started spraying until it was too late, when the potatoes are already affected. Yeah. Certified seeds and proper spraying yes. and proper scouting mm. and basically general management of your potato crop. Yeah and everything will be okay. Yes. So what else have you seen that we can rectify? Well, my face earlier I had seen uh, he had planted cogits. James has spotted some pests and diseases in the cogits. So here we are, cogit patch. The general management of this block, it is not well managed. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of weeds, mm -hmm. which is the best habitat for pests. Also, we have the potatoes. These potatoes are for the previous crop. Mm -hmm. Also, the disease which affects the potatoes, it also right. affects the, uh -huh. the cogit. My first observation was that the cogit is affected by a disease we call powdery mildew. Powdery mildew stops the leaves from making food for the plant by covering the leaves. So he'll harvest very tiny, tiny, very tiny cogit. Mm. So tell us, what is the solution then? It's a chemical we call Otifa. Ortiva is a preventive spray which you can use to stop your crops from getting powdery mildew. To tackle the powdery mildew, mix 50 grams of Ortiva in 20 liters of water. Spray on the leaves and at the center of the plant. This also should go on a quarter of an acre. Most of the white flies, you will see them hiding beneath the leaves. It sucks the water. Then it transfers a disease. Also, it affects the quality of the cogit. We have a chemical we call Actala. You spray after the germination of the cogit. It gets into the plant. Mm -hmm. When the white fly comes to suck water, mm -hmm. it sucks the chemical. To tackle white flies, do the same using Actara. Before getting the animals to the farm, you must have their feeds ready. With a new flock of chickens coming from Kenchik, our Unga expert is here to make sure we are ready. So this is uh, Harrison from uh, Unga. Could you tell Mr. Harrison what happened to your, your last chicken? Yeah, the second week after arrival, they started dying. Okay. We took the samples to Nyeri, Rab, and by the, the result we got is that the, the food was uh, contaminated. The stock would have been one of the causes because mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. assuming the field was absorbing a lot of moisture from the ground. They become contaminated with aflatoxin. So could you explain to us what you brought us? We start with the fugo chicken duckling mash, which is fed to the chick once it arrives from one day old up to around eight weeks. Right. The chick is supposed to feed an average of two kgs up to the time it's going to hit eight weeks. So right. if it's bringing a batch of 300 birds to work out easily, mm -hmm. you just multiply by two kg, he needs 600 kgs of chicken duckling mash. From then on, we shift on to fogo growers mash, which is fed from the ninth week up to the 18th week. Per chick is supposed to feed seven kg for the entire period. For the number of birds you have, if you're bringing 300, you multiply by seven kgs for every bird. For every mm -hmm. bird. So you get the total number of kgs. And the 18th mm -hmm. week is when the, the chicken will start laying. Mm -hmm. From then on, you give out fugo layer complete meal. There's a catch in between where farmers mostly make a mistake. Mm -hmm. 
before you tend to lay us complete meal, you have to get 5% of eggs worth the number of birds you have with a batch of 100 birds. Those are five eggs. Once you hit five eggs, you shift completely to the layers complete meal. After that, the layers is supposed to be fed now on a daily ration. It's not generalized. You give 140 grams per chicken per day. So if you have 100 birds, that gives you around 14 kg. You said 140 grams, isn't it? Yes. That's a daily ration for the whole day. I think what? the other time, mm -hmm. I have realized we were messing up with this bird mm -hmm. because we could give food mm -hmm. and by 11 we had already withdrawn the, the, feed, the feeds. Mm -hmm. yeah. You are starving them. Yeah. <laughs> Harrison has more advice to give. How important is water to the chicks? For a laying bird, the water is very crucial because the 70% of that egg is water. So if you deny that chicken water, you're going to have decrease in production. How do I improve the store? The floor needs to be cleaned first of all and has to be levelized, drains well and it's very dry all the time. Oh, you need to introduce the guards, the mice guards, so that to prevent rodents and all other stuff from entering that store. Mm -hmm. The mice can bring a very dangerous disease called salmonellosis. The next thing we need to do, we need to build pallets to be able to place the feeds. So the feeds should be off the ground, they should not touch the walls. You should leave a space of about one feet all around the feeds so that air can circulate all around. I was asking whether it is it is real. Okay. These layers can lay up to 98%. If you give the right amount of quantity of fugo, chick and duckling mash, fugo growers mash, and fugo layers complete meal, you're going to get 95 to 98%. Farmers are doing it and they're getting it. Some of them are even doing 100%. So you've had it rose, 100% eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Following the instructions from the Unga expert, Karis and the team get to work fixing the store so the chicken feeds are safe and won't be contaminated. While doing that, let's go meet the family's other children. George and Nwawero, what's stopping you from farming? You associate uh, farming with very hard labor. Yeah, right. So you want to stick in Nairobi and uh, you know, go sit at a computer. But I think we need to come out of that mindset. If you look at uh, most of the people who farm, eh, it not, does not look like the thing that would be appealing. It's not the in thing. Yeah, it's not the in <laughs> thing. You see, when you're seeing a doctor, you feel, ah, I want to be a doctor. George, you've been involved in farming with the old man. Yes, it has been challenging, but we've ripped a lot from farming. Yeah. Now, supposing the three of them say they want to start farming. I would give them eat a piece of land Wonderful. which you can, can manage for a period of time, not permanent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not for free? No, 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 not for free. There is no free things. <laughs> Ross, you would agree with that? Yeah, I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> now, Eric, Eric, now tell me, how do you use what, whatever you've learned to help your father in the farm? You can use the laptop that you have, find market for the products, and also, even when you have issues with the diseases, you can even go to Google, search. There are very many people who come there and give ideas on what to do. So you could incorporate modern technology into farming yeah. and help your father. Yeah. This has been very, very interesting, very, very nice. You've listened to your father's advice, and I'm, and I'm happy because most of you now are starting to change your attitudes towards farming. The chicken shed has been improved, but always, before a new stock come in, clean the shed thoroughly. Disinfect every wall, floor, corner, and crack. Don't forget to fill the food bath. Pour in wood shavings. Get the brooder ready. Then, line brooder with newspaper to help the chicks get enough feed in the first three days. Bring in the feeders and the drinkers with some glucose and liquid paraffin. And then the new flock come in. Ken Chick has brought 300 layer chicks from Zay and Rose to get their chicken shed back into business. Naomi, it's been wonderful shaping up Wilfred's Shamba. 
We had a look at his shamba where we sprayed some crops. Right, there's still so much more to be done. And you know what? I think we might just come back here again to do some more shaping up. Yes, it's been another great show here on Shamba Shape Up.